All right, let's get to it, man. I got some things I want to discuss about the game last night. Uh, LeBron James, Cleveland Cavaliers, Golden State Warriors. Now, got some issues, man. I'm a LeBron fan. Everybody that know me knows that I'm a devout LeBron fan. I've been watching this guy, you know, since his inception of, of coming out of high school into the NBA. So... Let's just get right into it, man. I'm really disappointed in LeBron James and in his effort uh, last night. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, he had a 40-point performance. And that right there speaks for itself. That's greatness. You know, look, I'm not concentrating on his 40-point effort. I'm not worried about that. What I'm concerned about is the, the ability to lead, or shall I say the inability thereof, to lead his young basketball team to success. Now, a few people may say, well, he has James Jones over there. He has Sean Marion. He has Perkins. These are guys that are all champions. They should be able to, you know, to, to fix what's going on. But they're not involved really in the, in, the, in the intricate part of the offense. I mean, they're in when they need to be in, but they're not in to really make some noise. I mean, <clears throat> they're just in. But here's my thing. LeBron James is responsible for everything. He's responsible for how this whole thing plays out. And uh, what I mean by that is, is that he is the one that orchestrated this whole thing. You got David Blatt, who's pretty much a rookie coach, you know, in his first first year in the NBA. And it's LeBron James' responsibility to, to uh, shape the mentality of this basketball team. It's his responsibility to do that. I mean, if, if you have a young basketball team, guys that have never been, never really been through the whole 82 grind season and then going to the playoffs and play the best of seven series, I'm not saying that they play the best of seven throughout the playoffs, but if you do, that's, a, that's basically 100 games, you know, um, that's played. So let's just, let's just talk about it. I mean, we, we're we're going to talk about the the Golden State series. We're not going to just talk about the playoffs. We're going to talk about the Golden State series alone. I mean, for one, everybody on that team is a mismatch um, going against LeBron James. There's nobody on that team that can guard LeBron James one on one. And you put Draymond Green of all people on LeBron James. That's a mismatch. But the reason why he's having success against LeBron is because LeBron gets he calls for the ball in the low block a lot of times. And when he's on the low block, he doesn't just catch and go. LeBron James will catch and he'll he'll you know he'll start doing his triple threat moves, you know, he'll start jab stepping and then he'll try to go. When you do that, anybody that's played the game of basketball knows when you start doing that, you give the opposition too much time to think about what they're gonna do defensively against you. Even if it's not a move to shut you down, they still will cause trouble. Uh, for you when you get ready to shoot the basketball. So this is some of the reasons why he's missing a lot of shots. You know, a lot of them he's making, you know, but a lot of those he doesn't even need to take if he would just catch and go. You know, I think him and Carmelo Anthony are two of the of the most uh, prolific basketball players, especially in the low block, um, having the ability in the triple threat uh, to to get around guys and do things, but they just won't catch the ball and go off the low block. If he did that, he would put himself in position and get to the line every time. Now, you would say to yourself, well, he hasn't been getting calls thus far, so how is he going to get calls now? Um, well, anybody that's ever played the game needs to know, and this is the, another thing that I got against him, is that um, you got to play through the whistle. You've heard this. All your life playing basketball, you've heard it. You know, I've heard it. You know, I've played basketball since I was 11 years old. Just over the last two years, I haven't really played basketball. You know, I've had some injuries and things like that. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, it's it's your job to to make sure that you educate your team on playing through the whistle. And he spends too much time, you know, and this is going to be my first time saying that LeBron James is a whiner. Uh, he spends too much time consulting with the referees, just, you know, constant, you know, oh, man, oh, man, I did this, I did, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, teammates doing the same thing, oh, 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 oh. And now the mentality is we're not going to get any calls tonight. So, you know, 
uh, whatever. And then they're walking down the court or jogging down the court instead of sprinting down the court and getting in position to stop some of the fast break opportunities that Golden State has. And we've seen Andre Iguodala drive down on multiple, multiple occasions dunking the basketball. You know, it just doesn't make any sense for the team to carry that mentality if the leader is constantly, I don't want to use bad language, but if the leader is constantly getting in his teammates behind and letting them know that they need to get down court and focus on um, on the next play and stop concentrating on what, what the referees are doing and not doing. What guys need to understand is this. When you go into halftime, you're talking about the referees. You're talking about players. You're talking about what dirty plays they're getting away with. You're talking about what strategies they have. You're talking about all of this stuff. Look, referees are getting together and doing the same exact thing. When you constantly are going to the referees and you constantly are complaining to the referees about this and that, they're talking about you during halftime. They're talking about you. You know, oh, man, you see what LeBron James, yeah, man, he came over to me, man, talking about the same call all game long. You know what? Next next quarter, man, I ain't going to even call it. You going to call it? No, I ain't going to call it either. I ain't going to call it either, man. I'm getting sick of that nigga. You know, they all sitting around in the group talking about who they like and, and who they don't like, who they respect and who they don't respect, how this guy's playing tonight, how that guy's playing, and they're going to decide how they're going to referee either the game or they're going to decide how they're going to referee the quarter or how they're going to referee you. I mean, plain and simple. I mean, it's not rocket science. And this guy spends too much time doing that, and so now the team has that mentality. They don't want to play. They don't want to get down on the next. They don't want to get down on the next uh, play in the game, and prevent things from happening or concentrate on the game. They're worried about you know uh, fouls and stuff that they're not getting. It doesn't make any sense, you know, for a team to have that mentality. What he needs to do. Is, is concentrate on leading his team and letting them know that during the finals, man, there's going to be calls that are going to be missed or there, there's going to be calls sometimes, you know, that they're just not going to call. You know, you're going to have to play through the whistle. And those are things that he needs to do as the leader of his team. You got J.R. Smith on your squad. You know J.R. Smith is a shooter. He's going to shoot, and he's going to shoot, and he's going to shoot. That's what he does. But all in the same breath, J.R. Smith – has a guy on him that's a mismatch for him. You got Clay Thompson that can't he cannot keep up with J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith is the shorter guy in that uh, matchup, and J.R. Smith is the quicker guy in that matchup. Every time he puts the ball on the floor and drive, notice Clay Thompson is out of position or he has to get help on defense. So he's going to draw the double team every time he has the basketball, which means all he has to do is pass the basketball or keep driving and get the contact and get to the line. Now, if you ain't going to get to the line, at least draw the double team and, and open up the floor for Iman Shumper, open up the floor for Della Vadova, open up the floor for Moskov, open up the floor for LeBron. Run. I noticed in the last game when Moskov came in and J.R. Smith put the ball on the floor, he drove on one play and he passed it um, to a wide open Moskov and Moskov dunked it. I mean, it's it's <clears throat> sorry about that. Guys had to take care of some business real quick, but when you got guys like that, man, you got J.R. Smith, you know that can uh, draw the double team. Um, all he has to do is be a facilitator for a while, and that's gonna cause Steve Kerr to have to make an adjustment on defense. Um, against him and uh, what that's going to do is they're going to start trying to lock down the paint on a guy like J.R. Smith. They're going to try to lock down the paint on him every time he drives. So whenever he does that then you can either kick the ball out for um, an easy pass or you can try to drive in and get that contact. But I would suggest making that pass and those are things that they need to be telling him they which is LeBron James. You need to be telling him man look I'm noticing man you're drawing a double team out there you need to uh, make sure that you're kicking the ball, man, and, you know, make sure. Because he gonna, he's going to know where all of these guys are. I mean, they practice together 24-7. So you're going to know exactly where they are on the floor, and, and um, it'll be easy for you to kick the ball for uh, easy scoring opportunities. And uh, later on in the game, I would say sometime after halftime, if he chooses to do something like that for the first half, you know, sometime after halftime, you're going to open up opportunities for you to score. I mean, the guy hit – you know, uh, got 11 points in nine minutes. I mean, dude, I mean, you need that nine minutes, that nine minute scoring run in the third quarter, late in the third or early in the fourth or late in the fourth. You know, you need those opportunities. So if you driving early in the game, it's going to force them to have to lock down the paint, which means it's going to be guys wide open on the outside. And they can either take, go ahead and take that uh, long distance jumper, you know what I mean, or go ahead and take the mid range shot. Either way, it's going to open up the floor for everybody. The spacing on the floor is going to be dynamic. They can move the ball around the way that they want to. 
and uh, things like that. So it, it's really up to LeBron to decide the fate of this team. I mean, the guy is, I mean, he's at the 30, 30, 30 point mark, 40 averaging. The guy got 40 points the other night. I mean, multiple rebounds. I mean, the guy is playing an excellent, excellent um, individual game. But now it's time to, to you know, ante up, you know, the, the psyche of the team. You know, and make them believe that they are something that that they're not. You know, they can only operate off. They when you have a team that's athletically, you know, that's athletically like depleted. It's only few few guys that have the athletic ability like uh, he does. And I would say when you have a team that's depleted like that, you have to go, you know, to motion sets. You have to go to screens. You have to use the pick and roll. Um, you have to rebound the basketball. You have to do all the intangibles. Rebound the basketball, turn into a defensive team. You know, make sure that you're scoring on um, on turnovers, you know, on those opportunities when you are able to get the ball back. You know, you shouldn't be just jacking up shots and, and, and letting them hit the corner and the backboard and all of that goofy stuff that those guys have been out there doing. So right now, man, I would just honestly have to say that a lot of this is on him, and you being the greatest player in the world, you really need to show it out there when it comes down to developing uh, character, you know, out on the floor with your teammates. You're a leader. You need to show it. You need to, you know, be assertive, and that's what I want to see in the next game. I don't think this series is over. I think LeBron still has a good shot at dominating this thing, and, um, if he can just get into the mentality of his teammates and stop setting a bad precedence when it comes down to interacting with these referees, stop doing that, I think they'll have much, much success. Peace.